I'm currently painting this art series that I've been working on for like a month and a half, and I'm thinking a lot about how I developed this style. And I wanna share some insight into some things that I've learned along the way. So I wanna start this video by saying that AI is like actually terrible. Did you guys see how like Nicki Minaj used it to promote that album that she just came out with or that diss track or whatever? Or how some famous brands are using it on their bags to like sell to people? It's like low key, high key terrifying for me, but in this video, I wanna talk about a piece of advice that I've received from a fellow artist a little while back through a story that he told me. So for the longest time, humans have used art to capture life. People started using paints to paint other humans and capture likenesses, and this was a skill that was desired by the wealthy. People would pay lots of money to have moments captured, like weddings, marriages, those are the same thing. Weddings, communions, special events, or whatnot. And for almost every point until then, that was what it was used for. Getting an insanely talented artist to paint you or a still life with some sticks, some globs of paint, and a canvas was the norm. This was until the late 1800s. Around then, cameras were invented and the art world were turned upside down. Their job became obsolete then because why would you pay a ton of money for someone to paint you in a bunch of hours when you could just hire someone for one hour and a little machine to just capture you. And this whole idea repeats over time. That isn't just a single event. Art is considered over because of a new invention. Artists adapt and its use sort of shifts. Think of how digital cameras came from film cameras. Videos came from photography. Spray paint came from just simple pens. Now, this esteemed artist then asked me, what is the one thing that remains even after these new inventions come and pass along? And I looked at him like you probably looked at me when I first started telling the story, a little confused, but he said, any piece of technology that gets invented to create art will never be able to capture the essence of the human condition as much as another human. Kind of separating the humanity out of that art just never really works out. I should do those images in the beginning. And honestly, I don't really care how good AI gets. I believe that its use will just be like a camera a tool that some people opt for because of how easy it is to just input something really quickly and get a result. Although I do think some greedy movie producers will use it to create some really bad movies and just pump out a bunch of cheap movies thinking that, you know, audiences won't be able to recognize it, but we really can. Or like big stores like Target and Walmart will produce bags like you've seen and just sell it to people who don't really care about what's on them. And that sucks. But under this current system of capitalism in the United States, and that is unfortunately impossible to avoid unless Congress steps up and enacts change in order to save the art world forever. Sorry, no politics, no politics. Back to the story. The, the artist then explained to me, that's what art is. That's what it boils down to. The artist explained to me that art boils down to humanity, capturing the human condition then. People want to have work on their wall that they know is an artifact from another person. Someone who cared about their craft, cared about their message, cared about putting that piece of paint on that canvas. So I'm telling you, the person who is scared of AI taking their job, lean into work that is gritty and raw and that really describes you and who you are. Describe your own lived experience, your story, your message. And I'm not just saying painting wise, I don't want you to go to like your backyard and take dirt from your childhood you know, home and put it on your canvas, right? You have to touch people's hearts meaningfully. It's the reason why a lot of these pre-technology forms of art are still being used today. It's why people prefer film to digital photography or why people started, you know, breaking away from the classic academic forms of art and started painting like this. It's integrating that little bit of human into your creation and connecting it to others better. And we've seen that time and time again prevailing. Paint artwork about your job and how your boss makes you angry. Create groovy work about the road trips you've been to all around the world. Create deep work about the struggles that you've internally faced and want to just share. Create work that is you. I've interpreted this in my own art and in this series that you've been seeing throughout this video. And I wanna talk more about this series, but just give me like 30 seconds so I could quickly explain the difference between my thought process of skill and art style. So art style is sort of the umbrella term for your specific visual decisions, like the colors and subjects, your content, the scale of your work and your choice of medium. It also considers your overall message, right? Artists have a message to send and they make all of these decisions that, you know, work together to come to a final series or piece. But in the past, skill was more widely regarded and it was kind of more important than any other thing. If you had the skill to capture someone realistically, you would paint them in a way that was very uniform, you know, just the subject with some sort of background and you would paint it realistically. Let's take a modern artist. Can Hindi Wiley, for example, and to summarize his artist statement, this isn't exactly what he says, but he wants to reappropriate these historic master paintings and depict both black and brown people 
and present cultures that they live in. And to do this, he learned how to paint like the masters, which was a skill that he had to hone over many, many years. Now let's talk about where skill isn't necessarily needed. Jean-Michel Basquiat was another painter whose goal was to tell the story of being an African-American living in the US in the 80s. But his point of view came from sort of anarchy, wanting to break away from those norms. So it wouldn't have made sense for him to paint like realism like Wiley did. So we get his really raw and gritty oil paint stick paintings. Now Basquiat did not necessarily learn a skill in the traditional sense through many years of academic training, like many of the students who are watching this video have, but he did develop his own visual language to tell his own story. And people considered him a revolutionary because, because art had shifted to the point where people were more obsessed with the message rather than the visuals, and it led to more people wanting to support that and buy it because of that message. You know, prior to that, some people might have not wanted to have a sort of creepy head very simplified face on their wall. But this was sort of the first time where that was sort of acceptable. And I think that's kind of beautiful. Now, to the student artist who's watching this, this is not to say that skill isn't important. I think developing the foundations, the fundamentals, can really help you break down some boundaries because you need to learn the fundamentals before, you know, move on. Because we know there are some tried and true things that look good and work. Like you can't get around not having a good composition. It's all about you really balancing the visuals with the message that you're trying to send. So one of the key factors to have a really unique and profound message mainly comes from sharing your lived experience like I've been mentioning. If you want people to support you, buy your pieces, follow your socials, watch your YouTube videos, you need to be honest and you could best do that by sharing the world around you. And that comes with looking internally, writing a lot, detailing what makes you special and making work around that. Let me give you an example of how I've sort of done this. You may have seen some of the paintings that I've done in the past, either on my website or in videos, and they're realism, right? It's a skill that I've honed over the years to capture life. But with this recent series, I've been trying to let loose. I'm trying to integrate my unique message and I've been developing this style for a while, which is essentially just breaking down things that I've seen around New York City. So let, let me actually read you the artist statement for this series, and as I think it'll clear up a bunch of questions that you might have. I often find myself maniacally staring at traffic lights, waiting for them to signal my passage. I want to be the first to step into the crosswalk. The anticipation, the rush, and the satisfaction of navigating the bustling streets fuel my creative spirit. Within the chaotic, claustrophobic streets of New York City, I find solace in taking joy in these everyday yet fleeting moments. Within this urban labyrinth, I wield my camera as a storyteller, documenting random instances of compassion, confusion, and confrontation. These candid snapshots serve as the base for my paintings, each one a unique story waiting to be told. Retreating back to my Hamilton Heights studio, I meticulously craft my narratives. The choice of color schemes becomes a crucial step, amplifying the fast-paced tempo of urban existence. My chosen medium is a fusion of oil paint to top spray paint, a deliberate union echoing the histories of both mediums in graffiti and museum contexts within the city. The initial splatters of aerosol on canvas are spontaneous, capturing the energy of the city. As I layer on oils over the spray paint, I slow down the visual narrative, revealing the intricate details of everyday moments, each deliberate brushstroke revealing the myriad of stories written on the city's brick walls. My artistic mission is to make the complexity of city life accessible through visual storytelling. I invite my viewers to immerse themselves in the urban labyrinth to witness the beauty in the fleeting moments and to connect with the profound stories embedded in the city's heartbeat. Each painting is a series of diverse noises, heartbeats, constant tapping, rumbling, honkings, and murmurs emanating from every window, subway grate, and Con Edison steam pipe. Together, they form a larger, ever-moving orchestra capturing the perpetual motion and transient encounters that define the city's rhythm. As my work evolves, I envision a transition from staring at traffic lights to observing people running through them, symbolizing a shift from competitive urgency to a contemplative appreciation of life's constant motion. My lived experience is living here in New York City, and I want to share my life as a mainly social anxiety-ridden observer. So this is all to say, maybe with this video or with the art or the message, I've gained a new appreciator in you. And I think you could do the same. So all I could say now is, what are you waiting for? Pick up a pencil, you know, a piece of paper and just start sketching, start thinking, start drawing. Start sharing your story. I've been a little MIA from uh, YouTube recently, um, but I've been working hard on this series and I'm hoping to find a venue to eventually show it if you are around. Um, but I will make a video announcement about that if that ever happens. So if you enjoyed this sort of longer introspective type video, consider commenting something nice. I very much appreciate it. And maybe we could exchange some pleasantries or consider subscribing. So yeah.